Coach, was one of the factors in drafting Jamar the ability to put pressure on defenses when you go three wide, that all three of those guys are threats and it makes that defense uh, not slack up and maybe overload on one player? You're exactly right. You know, you're able to put pressure on the defense and uh, we need to be more explosive. You know, that's one of the things that we lacked these last two years, really. And, and so adding a guy like Jamar Chase, uh, when you already got TB and you got T Higgins, and then we got good depth behind him as well. Um, and then you look at some of the other playmakers we got on offense. We're, we're really excited about the direction we're headed. Thank Zach, you. did you did you get any uh, any phone calls that might have intrigued you guys enough to think about getting out of that spot, or were you pretty definitive that once he was still on the board that that was where you were going? You know, we, we I just let Duke handle all that stuff. Um, you know, teams always called and for different things. Um, but but again, we were really excited about Jamar. Really happy that he was there at five. Um, it was no brainer for us to take him with the pick. Zach, when you started this process, how likely did you think? Because I, I, I don't think uh, we, we would have predicted, you know, three quarterbacks at the top necessarily back in January. So when you you start all this, was it reasonable to expect them at five, or is it pretty surprising? That it's hard for me to go back to January on what I thought sure. my expectations would be, but um, you know, you know, we we thought that there was a good chance three quarterbacks, maybe even four quarterbacks, you never knew, um, would go in front of us, and we were able to get a. a player that we were really excited about because there were several of them there. Um, but again, we're, we're happy that Jamar was the guy that was there at the fifth pick and um, grabbed him as quick as we could. Coach, who does, uh, who does Jamar Chase uh, compare to that maybe you've coached or received, you've seen, you know, everybody's big into the comparisons. Does yeah. Jamar, anybody yeah. come to mind that uh, with, when you try to analyze and compare Jamar? Not, not necessarily. I, I just look at the traits he has, you know, he, he's, um, he understands the ins and outs of playing receiver. Um, he's got great route understanding, great scheme recognition. Uh, you know, he, he, they're not 50-50 balls really when the ball's in the air. He does such a phenomenal do- job of positioning his body and going up and making plays and, and then finishing plays off. That, that's one of the things that really stands out. You know, he's got quickness, he's got speed, he's got great hands, but um, his ability to make that first man miss or break that first tackle to get additional yardage there Um, is really exciting to watch when you turn on state from 2019. Zach, you're always looking for guys with high character and leaders and captains. Uh, One of the things I heard a lot talking with Jamar's high school coach was just his work ethic. Um, How much of that was a part of your decision as well? Absolutely. He fits everything that we're about here in Cincinnati. Uh, That's one of the things you can get. That's where Joe Burrow comes into play. You know, you get a chance to talk about a guy's work ethic and for Joe to talk about how much time they spend together even in the spring, you know, just outside of football and working on it one-on-one, um, outside of t- team activities, tells you what you need to know about um, about him and that, that he's going to fit right in with what we're doing on offense and as a team. Zach, how much did, did uh, Joe campaign for Jamar and, and how much of that success they had in 2019 play a role in this pick? That's not really Joe's style. You know, I, I know that was reported out there. That, that's not how he goes about his business, you know, but – um, I, I certainly went to him and asked him specific questions about, about not only Jamar, but other players he's played with. And um, you could tell that he had a great fondness for Jamar. He would be excited to play with him again if that's the direction we headed. Uh, but again, that, that's not really Joe's style to, to come up and say, hey, we need to be taking this guy. That, that didn't happen at all. Did the, offensive, did the offensive line depth, Zach, in this draft make it easier to take a wide receiver in round one? We feel like there's some guys available um, that can help us. We also feel like, you know, get, getting Jonah back healthy, getting Riley Reef over there at right tackle, um, that, that we've got some guys coming back that will help us that maybe weren't available to us all of last year. And, and so, again, there will be some players in this draft. That, that's a position we, we will continue to address, but um, felt good about adding Jamar with the fifth pick. Zach, when it comes to, you know, taking Jamar at five, was you guys you guys talked about, you know, you guys don't want to, you want someone to come in and make an immediate impact. Was that probably maybe a deciding factor when you look at some of the other options who are available to you at five? I wouldn't say that. I, I think all the guys that were available to us would have a chance to come in and really impact your football team. And uh, Jamar was just the right fit for us. Zach, uh, there was posted today, but the uh, quarterback, your quarterback, Joe Pearl, Posted a video of him throwing, he's throwing some long balls. I don't know if you've seen it yet or what you know, but, but how are you feeling about his progress? Everything seems to be on pace. You know, it's, it's been encouraging so far. I haven't gotten a chance to see him throw yet. Um, so you guys have maybe seen more than I have there, but everything's been positive and he seems to be on track for, uh, for how we thought everything would shake out. 
almost got me there. You remember the first time you guys talked about, you know, Chase versus Sewell? Do you remember the how, the beginning of that, the first real conversation in your guys' draft room? I remember the first conversation I had about Jamar Chase was watching Joe Burrow last year and saying, oh, my goodness, we have this receiver also, and then finding out that he wasn't available. You know, he was too young. And and uh, me and me and Brian Callahan just talking about, man, what if you had that guy on your team? And so um, – you know, for it to play out the way it did it is exciting for us. I, I don't remember the first conversations to answer your question, Paul, in the draft room. We, we have, you know, we, we've been meeting up there for, for months now and have extensive conversations and talk through every scenario. And, and again, Duke leads the charge there and does a, does a phenomenal job of um, leaving no stone unturned and making sure we have every uncomfortable conversation that you got to have and, and make sure that we, we all get to the result that we're going to get to tonight. And um, so just really hats off to Duke and his staff and, and the work that they've done and the position they put us in um, over the course of this process has been really impressive. Coach, how, how, how about the style of offense that LSU ran in 2019 with Joe quarterback and then Chase? And now you have Moss, too, the tight end that he that he had success with in 2019. The style of offense uh, transitions pretty well to the NFL. Is that a factor? It does. I post all the concepts there. You can see a lot of things that, that we ask our guys to do that he's done on tape. Um, you can see Joe and the timing with Jamar in that case. And so uh, obviously there, there's a little bit of new terminology and there'll be some new wrinkles that are new to him, but um, I, I anticipate him coming right in and, and being very comfortable uh, with the terminology, what we ask him to do, and, and obviously being comfortable with the quarterback, which is encouraging. You didn't add a starting wide receiver in free agency. Was the type of player you knew you could get at five, did that play any role in that? Um, no, I, I, we, we evaluated plenty of receivers, and, and we just felt like um, we had some needs on defense we needed to address. We added Riley on offense. Um, so we felt good about where we were headed. And, and, again, we got a lot of confidence in guys like Auden Tate and Mike Thomas and um, some of those guys that are behind them. You know, th those guys have played a really good role for us and will continue to in the future. Coach, you had uh, the first pick last year a little bit more certain about who you would get because no one has went in front of you. So much uncertainty in these first four picks. Was there a little different uh, anxiety for you waiting for number five to come around? Uh, I think that's safe to say. You know, when there's a player you really want, um, you want him to be there. And, um, you know, so some of those 10 minute periods there and the two picks before us, um, you know, you're just intrigued to see what some of these other teams are thinking. You know, even if it doesn't affect us, it's there's a lot of conversation that occurs over the last couple of months. And, uh, speculation and, it, and it's fun to follow and it was interesting to see who those teams would pick. Thanks. When you asked Joe Burrow uh, for some information about Jamar, was there anything especially impactful or any story that that he shared that you really resonated with you? I don't know that I needed a lot of convincing uh, necessarily. I, I just said a scale of one to ten, what would be your excitement level if we added Jamar Chase? And he said ten. And uh, that was a pretty good answer. I know you've evaluated a lot of film of him from LSU, but how many times have you watched that film and thought like, this is going to be our connection here in Cincinnati? 10,000 times. I mean, it's, uh, it's, we, we watched, I feel like I've seen the 2019 LSU season um, more than I've watched our own stuff. It feels like at times with the amount of prospects that they've had come through and now two years in a row now of watching those guys. And um, so again, it, it is, um, there is a lot of work to be done. Certainly, this is the NFL. This isn't college, and it's not going to be easy. He's going to walk in and have to really work to, to regain that chemistry with Joe and the rest of our offense. Uh, but at the same time, you can visualize um, easily what, what, it, what we intend for it to look like um, with him at the quarterback. Two more minutes. Was, uh, I, think, I, think Duke had, I think Duke had said at one point that there was some, maybe a little bit trepidation on, on guys and, and evaluating guys who didn't play last year. What did you see from Chase during the pre-draft process and maybe in the workouts that said, you know, even though we didn't play, we feel good about what we're getting at five? I think he handled the process very professionally. Um, he, he went and worked, you know, and, and there's a handful of guys you could see on the pro days that maybe you would question how they trained during that opt-out period. But um, I, I don't think anybody can look at Jamar Chase's pro day and look at the numbers he put up and, and actually watch the, the workout, you know, when, when Tanner Lee was throwing the routes to him um, and, and could say this guy – at all over that course of the opt-out period. You know, he obviously uh, put his head down, went to work, uh, attacked it professionally, and put himself in a great position to be here. 
Zach, how much attention will you pay to the rest of tonight in the first round, and what are the chances that we might see you again tonight? Well, I, I don't think you ever take anything off the table, um, but certainly we, we've talked endlessly about players that could be taken at the end of the first round and, and guys that would be there in the second round. So so we, we are very curious to see how it all shakes out because, again, we've had uh, weeks and weeks and weeks of conversation about these players, and you want to see how it shakes out. Zach, how does Joe Burrow benefit from this pick? You know, overall, X's and O's wise, how does it make his life easier? Well, there's certainly three receivers, you know, and we're not even counting our tight ends and running backs who who uh, can really challenge a defense. You know, we feel like all those guys can win. We expect them all to win one-on-one -on -one situations. Um, they all have a, a great football IQ. They all have great ball skills. They all have separation ability. They all have big play ability. Um, and so, again, it, it's an exciting group to trot out there on the field and uh, really excited about what it's going to look like. One last question. It appeared that uh, Jamar was wearing orange and black shoes. I, I don't know if he anticipated this or hoped for it, or, or if I'm just you know reading too much into it. But how did he react uh, when you made the call? You could see there was some excitement there. You know, he was obviously in Cleveland with his family, and you could hear the cheers in the background. And um, it's one of those experiences I, I don't take for granted being able to share that news with somebody, and, and it's life changing news. And um, I could tell the excitement level. Um, you could see whoever was behind him was excited as well. So it, it was a really cool experience. All right, coach. We'll let you get out of here. Thanks for your time. Okay. Thanks, coach.